All right, good afternoon, everyone. Glad to have you here for our first educational session from Gator Studios for 2023. I'm Mike Huber, Director of Technical Support here at Alliance, and I have Chris Morrissey, our New England sales rep. Chris has been around with us for eight years. He's a wealth of knowledge, just like all of our other sales reps. And today we're going to teach you a little bit about when to use nitro and when to use polymeric sand. So pretty cool topic, Chris. It I think is. it's pretty relevant. A lot of people are experiencing nitro and air cured resin based joining material for the first time right now. So Chris, you install hardscape, right? I have, yep. Put some pavers in. What, what goes in between pavers? Yeah. Joining material, Mike. Right. How about dirt? Is uh, that a good joining I don't material? Know if you want to use dirt, Mike. You're Potential have weeds, some ants. Right, we don't want burrowing insects. We don't want weeds to grow in our joints. We don't want that material to wash out. We want to make sure we have a strong, durable, cohesive joint material. Yeah. It's no fun to pull weeds all summer, right? It's not. You have to do it multiple times a year in that case. Polymeric sand and nitro both will fulfill that purpose and that goal. So, hey, they're both going to solve that problem, but there are situations where you would choose one or the other. So polymeric sands, yeah. first off, They've been around for, what, 20 years, right? 20 years or so, yeah. Everyone's pretty familiar with polymeric sands. They're used as a, you know, as part of a job. They're not an add-on anymore. They go in almost every hardscape project that's installed now. And Alliance manufactures the best polymeric sand out there, yep. Gator Max G2 with Rapid Set. So what are some of the benefits to that Gator yep. Max G2? Well, G2 comes with no dust, so we're eliminating all that, those dust particles while you're installing. Oh, it keeps the surface cleaner, you don't yep. breathe it in, so that's good, right? Yep. It's haze-free, you know, 20 years ago, poly sand, you know, very dirty stuff and can have potential haze over the project after the install, which looks blotchy, makes it look bad. Yep, if you didn't install it completely according to the instructions, then you ran the risk of discoloring those beautiful pavers that you installed. Yep. But G2 from Alliance has made installing polymeric sand almost foolproof. Yep. And then the one watering for G2 is just eliminating a bunch of steps and getting you off the project faster. Right. Makes things a lot simpler. Yep. So we've, we've made polymeric sand better performing yep. and easier to install. But yep. what about nitro? That's an air cured resin based joining material, Chris. Yep. All right. Kind so, of a mouthful. <laughs> yep. So it's nitrogen infused. So it keeps it at a wet state. But once it gets open to oxygen, it starts hardening up. That is pretty cool. So nitro is different than polymeric sand. We get strength top to bottom. That full joint is going to harden up. You can install nitro rain or shine where you need a dry surface to install polymeric sand. And Gator Nitro is permeable. So definitely a few differences than polymeric sand. Yeah, a lot different if you ask me. All right. Well, I was busy this weekend. I was building a few uh, sample pieces of uh, polymeric sand joint for you. You know, Chris, did you do anything this weekend? Uh, I was busy myself, Mike. Got some nitro, put it together, made this nice little slab for you. I couldn't do that with polymeric sand. No, you can't. You couldn't shake it around either without it breaking. Wow. So that's some pretty tough stuff, huh? That it must is. be the best joining material out there. I don't know about that, but it's definitely a possibility. All right. So we're going to dive into some things, but real quick, before we get started, we know that nitro is a new product for most of you. you know, maybe you haven't tried it. Maybe you've uh, just heard about it. So yep. we got a pretty cool video that'll show you features and benefits of nitro and a little bit about how to install it. So let's roll that video, Tim. <laughs> All right, pretty cool stuff, but wow, that yep. installation is way different than any poly sand install I've ever been on. It's a lot different. Yeah, no compaction, tons of water. It, 
product performs just as different from polymeric sand as the installation differs as well. And we've got a little demo right here. So we installed some paver joint here. Yep. We did nitro on one side. So we've got our Gator Nitro in our new silver color. Silver's new to us this year. You can see the old gray color, which is more of like a charcoal. I think silver matches our existing and very popular slate gray color, but you can see the difference between the two. And I mean, in my opinion, Mike, this might take a lot of that gray sale. Yeah, I think it really will work well with many of those gray tones that are very popular in the industry right now. Yep. So the new nitro silver is a fantastic color, closer in tone to our existing gray polymeric sand, which we actually have right over here on the other side of this joint. Yep. So side by side, we're going to take a look at a Gator Nitro joint and a polymeric sand joint. So Chris, give me a hand here. Let's uh, break this apart here. Oh. oh, we broke apart backwards. So let's turn this around for you and take a look at what we have going on here. So you can see from this cross section, this is hardened up all the way from through top to from bottom. top to bottom. And that's, uh, that's an 80 millimeter paver. That's three inches thick. Yeah. So top to bottom in about 18 hours, that's the cure time. It is strong, it is durable, but hey, is that the best? Maybe not, we'll see. <laughs> Over here we have our polymeric sand. So this is G2 Gator Max, and you can see it's pretty well set up. It's gummy, it's sticky, it's cohesive, but it hasn't completely dried out underneath. Polymeric sands cure by drying. They need to dry out completely in order to harden up. It's not a chemical cure, kind of like that oxygen activated resin in the nitro. So when polymeric sands dry completely, they will harden up. When they get wet, they will soften up again. That cycle can happen a million times, but it is a cycle. It is a, a process of going from hard to soft, hard to soft, and you have a thick, durable, resilient crust that will help to prevent weeds, erosion, burrowing insects, supported by that densely packed material underneath. Yep. If you happen to have loose dry material underneath, loose wet material underneath in a polymeric sand joint, that's completely normal behavior. Yep. All right, so rigid versus some flexibility. And I think we have a question coming in here. Uh, Topher, what do we have? Yeah, so a couple questions have come in so far. Dave has asked if you do an ICPI base 2A, how does that work with nitro and the amount of water needed for installation? Well, we are going to touch on that in a little while, so we'll hold that question. Anything else, Topher? Another question Diane asked, do you have to stay off the pavers for the 18 hours dry time when it comes to nitro? You do not. Um, just like polymeric sands, you could certainly walk on the surface right after installation. We're going to keep the polymeric sand at least an eighth of an inch below that paver joint, right? We want to make sure the sand is nice and low, the nitro is nice and low, so that the paver is the wear surface. The joint is just uh, filling that void space. It's going to look better and it's going to perform better, but right after you install nitro or polymeric sand, you can definitely walk on it. For vehicular traffic, I would recommend waiting a little while before yeah. allowing cars to drive on that. So if you can keep them off for a day or so, that would be ideal. Anything else, Topher? Good to go. All right. Appreciate the questions. Keep firing them out here. So again, that idea of rigid versus flexibility. Is that strength, is that rigidity that you have with the Gator Nitro really the best? Or does that flexibility and that adhesion that polymeric sand has to the edge of the paver have some benefits beyond just pure strength? So let's take a look at this next demo, Chris. Uh, what do we got here? We've got a kind of a mock-up of a flexural strength tester from a laboratory, right? Yeah, you might have some movement in a project, and we're going to demonstrate that a little bit. All right. So typically in a lab, we test the flexibility of materials by placing them on a stand like this and using uh, computer controlled equipment to test the actual flex and the force required. But what we're going to show you here is that polymeric sand bends, right? See that bend here? See that flex? Polymeric sand can move. It can wiggle. And where would we want that bend? Like where would we specifically want it to be flexible? Well, when you install pavers, interlocking concrete pavers, they're designed to be flexible, right? It's a flexible paving system. So if we have some flexibility and some movement in our paving system, then flexible joint material seems like a great idea to me. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> if you're talking about a driveway, for example, yep. you'll see even more movement than normal. So yep. polymeric sand is really the best idea for a driveway. However, 
a properly prepared residential driveway could certainly get nitro in the joints. Gotcha. All right. How about the flexibility of nitro here, Chris? Let's uh, see what kind of flex we got. What do you think? Uh, it doesn't seem there much give there. I wonder if anybody out there sees any bend happening. Chris, uh, you're stronger than I am. You think you could make this bend? I'm sure I could. All right. Let's see what you got. All right. That's not what I was thinking, Chris. Uh, I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't think that bent. I think it just snapped in half. Yeah, brute force is what we call that. So, very strong, but brittle. So, hey, it's excellent in some areas if you're doing a natural stone job where you want to simulate a mortar joint, but if you're talking about flexibility, polymeric sand wins hand sound. Sounds about right. <laughs> All right. The next thing we're going to talk about is the actual installation site conditions that are required for each project. And that's what we're going to talk about proper drainage and the amount of water that you use when you install this. So first off is the idea of installing nitro with water, right? We're going to use a lot of water to install it. We want yep. that water to fill up the joint, kind of pull the nitro into the joint, and we need the water to leave so the nitro fills it up. Right. <laughs> if that water doesn't leave, if that water doesn't drain out while you're trying to install nitro, then you're not going to get a nicely packed filled joint, especially if you have a tighter joint. It's hard to get the nitro in too, Mike. I've noticed that the water is filled from top to bottom in that joint, a little bit more time consumed in the actual install. Yep. So what are we talking about? We need a drainage base to install nitro. And a drainage base is something that allows water to freely flow through it. So concrete sand, clean chip, an ASTM number nine stone or number eight stone would be ideal. Something like stone dust is certainly not ideal. A concrete overlay that drains very slowly is also not ideal. So for a concrete overlay, I would use polymeric sand all day long. For stone dust, well, nobody should be using stone dust in the industry, Chris. It's a little outdated and it doesn't help out. It just traps and holds moisture. So you can see the water backing up on the stone dust side in that video we were showing you. That moisture is going to be a problem for nitro or for polymeric sand, right? Keeps the drawing material wet longer, starts to deteriorate. And that's for polymeric sand or nitro, right? Polymeric sand is going to soften up with that constant exposure to moisture. Nitro, well, that's going to suffer over time, too. Yeah. And let's think about freeze-thaw cycles, too. If we have a permeable joint material, nitro is permeable, yep. and we allow all that water down into a job, well, if the base doesn't drain, that's going to be a potential problem over yeah. time as well. So what did you throw up on the table for us here, Chris? Uh, we got some number eight stone. Kind of want to show a little demonstration as far as... Uh... How much product you'll actually be using. So we talked about the idea of a free draining base and there's no better free draining base than these hybrid yep. type uh, installs, permeable type installs yep. where that water can freely drain through the chip setting bed into the clean stone underneath and out into the job in the soils below. Becoming more and more popular and it presents some challenges for polymeric sand. It does. You're actually going to be using a little bit more product. <laughs> or you're not going to be using more product, but doing it incorrectly. Yeah, true. <laughs> so because that chipstone is free draining, because it has void space, what happens when I put polymeric sand in it? Well, it's going to fill in those voids, Mike. So we pour our polymeric sand in here, and you can see some has immediately started to trickle down into that void space. It has. When I compact it. Compact? You have to compact polymeric sand. It's very important. Yeah. Where is that sand going? Looks like it's going through the voids almost to the bottom it's of that It's migrating jar. right down through that clean stone. So when you compact, you need to continue compacting until the sand stops dropping, until it's choked off all of that void space and started to self-support itself. If you do not do that, well, you'll activate it. You'll think everything's great and yeah. come back two months later to see what, Chris? Yeah, you'll activate a crust on the top and then everything below it, all that loose compact dagger or sand just goes right to the bottom and you're left with just a crust. Well, that's no good. It's no good. For these chipstone installs, for hybrid base, Gator Nitro is ideal. It's yeah. pre-mixed with that resin, with the glue that binds it together. And as such, it's kind of a stickier material. So let's put some Gator Nitro on top of this chipstone. And no compaction necessary, right? So that's ready to go. You can see, basically choked itself off immediately. It's going to harden up from top to bottom. It's not going to migrate over time. So those hybrid base installs, those chip installs, definitely an application where I would consider using nitro instead of polymeric sand. Absolutely. Now, how about that permeability? We said it's permeable. 
Does it meet the specs for a true permeable job, Chris? No, you need certain flow rate information for that. And, you know, the voids in nitro are a little bit too tight, so I don't think it's going to meet the requirement. Right. When you're putting in a number nine stone, a quarter inch chip, you've got a lot of void space. You have yeah. high flow rates, plus the ability to remove that chip and reinstall it if it never gets it. clogged or dirty. Yeah. Nitro doesn't really give you that. So while it is permeable, not really meant for a true permeable job. And I believe we've got a question. Uh, what do you have for us, Topher? Yeah, have got a couple of questions that have come through. Robert is asking, uh, can you use nitro with paver base? Can you use nitro with gator base? Is that what I heard? You <laughs> gator base. All right. Yes, you certainly can use nitro with gator base. It's a fantastic option. The drainage is built into gator base. It's a Excellent foundation. Yep. Nitro is going to be a perfect joint filling material for that application. What else do you have, Topher? When applying nitro, can you use too much water? Can you apply too much water, Chris? There realistically isn't too much water. If you were working in the rain and you have a, like a torrential like hurricane weather downpour, it might be hard to move around the product efficiently, but uh, I mean, I've been on sites with certain water hoses. You really can't have too much water. Right. It helps to have two people, one person on the hose the whole time, one person on a broom or squeegee pushing yeah. it around. And I agree with Chris. Unless you've got a non-draining base, you can't use too much water. Right. All right. What else do we have, Topher? How long after you open the bucket of nitro before you have to use it all? Well, it depends on the temperature and the humidity, but yeah. you've got hours. You know, you're yeah. talking about six, eight hours of, you know, being able to, to work with that material before it really starts to harden up. Um, you certainly want to work with it a little bit quicker than that. If you have any excess material, put it back in that bucket, cover it with a few inches of water. That'll prevent the oxygen from getting to it and prolong the lifespan, whether it's on that job site or to use it a couple yeah. weeks later. Yeah, you're not going to be open up numerous amount of buckets. You're actually going to work bucket to bucket, a little different from polysand. You can get away with that and opening up all your polysand, sweeping it around, compacting. With nitro, you're going to work bucket to bucket and make sure you have all the joints filled before you move to the next bucket. And part of that's the flow of the job site, right? If you yeah. have to compact your polymeric sand, well, you don't want to sweep out 80 square feet and compact it. You want to do more, but there's right. no compaction required with nitro. So just get it into those joints, finish off a section, open up another bucket and move on to the next. Yeah. All right, Chris. So, all right. Driveways, we might want to consider polymeric sand, but yeah. we could use nitro if it's a residential driveway that's well constructed, no movement. Yep. Hybrid base, we're thinking nitro. Yep. How about joint width? Uh, joint width is, uh, you know, a big factor in how it actually gets applied. It certainly is. You know, you need to consider that joint width. It is a very important consideration in how easy the job is going to be to perform and whether or not you're going to actually like gator nitro or polymeric sand. <laughs> so first up, what do we have here, Chris? We've we have got tighter joints. That's a pretty tight joint. Yeah. It's a typical four by eight, a Holland stone. I don't think you're getting nitro into that joint. You might fill in the top little layer, but I don't think you're getting anything lower than that. Yeah, you, you could <laughs> fill in that chamfer where you're not <laughs> supposed to have any polymeric sand or nitro, but you're not right. gonna fill up that joint from top to bottom. You need yeah. at least a 3 16 of an inch wide joint in order to successfully install gator nitro. And yeah. hey, I, that's what we got here. Yeah. So we're talking about, oh, it's roughly a quarter inch wide joint, you know, three sixteenths, perfect for nitro. Yeah, it is. You can go either way with this, of course, and those, that three sixteenths you're finding in common three piece pattern pavers these days. So a lot of jobs, you can kind of go either way. Yep. yep, in that middle ground, you've got the choice. So too tight, go polymeric sand, very wide. Well, you got a choice there too, really. Yeah. So once you get into these wider joints, we're talking about a half inch, three quarters of an inch, that could also be polymeric sand or nitro. Yep. Your nitro is going to fall very easily into a joint that's this wide. Into that half inch, three quarter inch wide joint, you'll have a very efficient nitro install. The tighter the joint goes, the more effort, the more water it's going to take to be able to fill that joint up from top to bottom. Yep. What else do you have there, Chris? Yeah, we've got some more. Tighter joint. That's a really tight joint. Uh, porcelain tile. Porcelain tile is becoming more and more popular. So we're seeing that over and over again pop up in the industry. I'm installing porcelain tile. What do I put in the joints? And that looks tight. I think I'm gonna have to use polymeric sand in that, right, Chris? So no. So porcelain tile these days, it's three quarter inch height level is what we see most common out there. Yeah, two the centimeter tile, three yep. quarters of an inch. Yep. So that's not much depth. So you're actually gonna be able to get nitro in between the joints there. It might take a little bit, but that's what we wanna see. Right, smooth sides, you can install gator nitro in a 1 8 3 16 or quarter inch wide tile joint as long as the project is constructed using the gator tile system. 
Yep. And what, what is that Gator tile system, Chris? Uh, it's seven components, all Gator products. So you're starting with the Gator base being one. Right. So we need a good yep. foundation. Yep. We've got spacers that provide that alignment and stability. Yep. Tile is a challenging product to install. We found the only two successful ways to install porcelain tile are to thin set it to a concrete slab yep. or use the Gator tile system. And the Gator Nitro is going to be the best joining material to use in tile when installed with the Gator tile system. Yes. All right. So those are some pretty good applications. Wide joint width, up to two inches for Gator Nitro. Perfect. You know, as long as you're between that 3 16 and two inches for concrete pavers, go for it. G2 Gator Max, what are we talking about there? Basically, a hairline crack yep. up to four inches wide. Yep. Beyond four inches, you want to consider our gator dust. <laughs> yeah, that's where we're going to be irregular, and that's where you go for that. All right, so joint width. Obviously, tight joints get polymeric sand. Yep. Those middle ground, you could make a choice there. And in the wide, you could also make a choice, really. Yep. How about weather conditions, Chris? Weather could be a problem, Mike. Weather can be a challenge. If you go out to a job site and it happened to rain that morning, maybe you left your shop and it was sunny, but you get out to the job site and find out that it just rained. Well, we're not installing polymeric sand on that job, right? Yeah, it looks a little too wet. Poly sand's gonna start to be activated on contact, which we talked about earlier could cause polyhaze. Or just sand stuck all over the surface. <laughs> yeah, so it's ugly. Not a great situation, but if that happened to us and we were planning to install Gator Nitro, You'd be fine. We'd be fine. Yeah. You could go out and install it. We need to wet down the surface to protect it from staining. You're going to use tons of water, so Gator Nitro can be installed on a wet surface. Kind of ideal for those days you know, early in the spring, late in the fall, when jobs might not dry out quite as quickly. Yeah. You have a few wet pavers here and there. You're waiting to, to get that poly sand in. Nitro can be installed rain or shine. And as we're talking about spring and fall, we're talking about potentially lower temperatures too. So. Hey, poly sand uh, better than nitro for temperatures, or what's the difference? Uh, they're kind of on an equal playing field, Mike. You know, 32 degrees and up for poly sand, and that's surface temp. We don't want our water to be drying as we're activating poly sand, and 37 degrees and up for nitro. Right. So, hey, that's really a toss up in my book. Yeah, they're right. We're going to use water to install both. We're certainly going to use more water to install nitro, but you can't have that water freeze while you're installing it. So, as long as you're above freezing, you're going to be above freezing for a few hours after the install. Either one can be used successfully. Yes. All right. What else you got for us, Chris? Yeah, we have a question. We I have believe. a question. What do we got? A couple different questions come up here. So um, several people have asked the question as far as the cost difference, and obviously that's going to depend upon uh, well, working with your dealer to get that to get that answer out. Um, another question has come in, would you recommend using both nitro and poly sand when you have a wider field joint, but also a more narrow border joint? All right. So we'll take both of those questions. As far as cost goes, the resin-based joining materials like Gator Nitro are definitely more expensive than polymeric sands. Different characteristics, um, you know, different performance profile, but you are going to pay a premium for those products. Yep. Is it worth it? You know, that's up to you to decide on a kind of a case by case basis. I personally think that most jobs will continue to get polymeric sand. Yep. Are you going to have an application where nitro is perfect? Definitely. Yes. Yep. You know, that will happen. All right. Now, as far as our next question there, what do you think, Chris? Say that a question again, Topher. <laughs> the question was referring to using both nitro and uh, poly, and our poly sand on the same on the same job. You know, the, the interior area has a wider joint, the border area has a more narrow joint. So I've had to do this before, and it's usually at a dealer location where we're doing some display area. And if you are gonna go in that direction, you'd want to do your poly sand first and then finish up with your nitro. It's multiple steps, it's different two different installations. Slightly I'd, different colors. Slightly different colors. I'd almost try to stick with one or the other if possible. Right. And if you've got a, a definite reason to do it, distinct areas, maybe it makes sense, but I wouldn't try to do a border in polymeric sand and the field in nitro. It would just start to get a little bit messy. You wouldn't have a clean cut, distinct line between the two. Yeah. What else do we have, Topher? Uh, for our friends in the north, how does nitro respond to areas that get salted in freeze water, freezing water temperatures? Well, the whole point of nitro is that it's permeable, right? So whether we've got water working its way through or salt water working its way through, as long as it works its way through and disappears, yeah. it's not going to harm the nitro yeah. whatsoever. What's harmful to nitro is when that water goes in, 
and backs up and fills the joint and stays there for prolonged periods of time. That mm -hmm. constant saturation will break the nitro down, and that constant saturation with freeze-thaw cycles will certainly be a bad thing. Yeah, it's the same thing with like hybrid base. You, you want that water to go somewhere, and if it stays within your hybrid base, it's going to freeze, it's going to thaw. Same thing could happen with the joining material. All right. So our next concept is the idea that nitro is permeable. It is. And polymeric sand is impermeable. It is. So we've got a little demo here. This is a polymeric sand joint. I'm going to pour some water on this polymeric sand joint. Where's the water going, Chris? Uh, there's not much absorption with poly sand here. Right. So polymeric sand is going to certainly get wet. It will absorb water, but it will absorb that water very slowly. It's not going to allow that water to pass through or drain through. I would imagine we come back in an hour, that's probably going to soak in. Yes. But it's not free flowing, it's not free draining. That water is all sitting there. We do want your project to be pitched. All right, so what we have here is our, I'll get it situated in the camera field for you. This is our Gator Nitro. So if you take a look at this shot, we're going to pour some water in there, and you can see that water suck down into the joint very very quickly that's amazing it's amazing yeah. but you don't always want that no if you have a poor draining base and you let a lot of water go through the joints what's going to happen your base is going to be saturated <laughs> it's going to cause movement right water yeah. lubricates particles causing settling freeze thaw cycles mm, it's going to be a problem bad Cracking. idea so if you've got a freely draining base and setting bed well permeable joint material is ideal it helps get water off the surface eliminate any puddling and ponding but if you've got a base that doesn't drain as well, if you have clay soils, you might want to consider the fact that polymeric sands creating more of a runoff situation than an infiltration situation yep. could be the best choice. Yep. All right. Pretty cool stuff, Chris. A lot of differences. One of the things that I hear over and over again is that homeowner that expects the joint between their pavers to be concrete. Well, listen, poly sand number one it does get pretty hard. You know, it will have some give to it when you put your finger on it after it's been completely cured. But we all know once it rains again, it's going to absorb moisture. It's become flexible. We showed you that demo originally. Right. So if you've got a really wide joint and people are walking around on it in high heels, well, they could potentially puncture a polymeric sand joint. Yep. Gator Nitro might be the best bet if someone's truly looking for that rock hard, rigid, yep. mortar like joint. Yep. There's the mortar for you. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, certainly some natural stone applications. A lot of hardscapers. Well, they're used to installing pavers. They're used to installing polymeric sand. They're not used to doing mortar on the joints. A lot of them, hey, that's outside their comfort level. So yep. Gator Nitro gives you almost that mortar performance, but yep. in a much more cost-effective and easier manner of installation. Yeah, the efficiency alone is worth it. Yep, so, hey, I think that you got to look at Nitro versus polymeric sand on a case-by-case -case basis, depending on what your actual job site situation is, how it's constructed, what the homeowner's expectations are, but they're both excellent choices to have at your disposal. Yeah, what do you see percentage-wise poly sand to nitro? <sighs> hey, right now, obviously, polymeric sand's 99% of installs out there, right? Sure. Nitro's a, a newcomer to the game, but even over time, I think polymeric sand's going to retain 75% 80% okay. of the market just because it's well suited to tight joints and many pavers yep. still have tight joints, right? Yep. It's really a great product for driveways because of that flexibility. You know, nitro certainly serves a purpose as a very strong, very rigid joining material. A lot of natural stone applications I could see going nitro. Yeah. But, uh, you know, hey, we'll see. We'll, we're, we're along for the ride with you. We'll see uh, where this ends up being used and how frequently. Okay. I believe we've got a couple more questions. Yes, we do. And I'm going to try and I'm going to ask several of these questions because they're kind of all clumped together and, and kind of related. On average, how long will Gator Nitro last in a patio? More specifically, do you need to worry about it becoming clogged up over time? How easy is Nitro removed and reinstalled? And how does Nitro perform while being cleaned? All right. Well, they are all kind of related. They so are. how long will Gator Nitro last? Well, we're not entirely sure. It is a very strong, very durable product, and we think yep. it's going to last a long time. Yep. Taking a step back, we think polymeric sands are going to last 15 years, installed according to our instructions and under the right site conditions. We put a five-year warranty on Gator Nitro. Yep. So Gator Nitro doesn't have that cycling process, that softer, harder, softer, harder, wet, dry, wet, dry, that allows the product to flex and move and self-heal. 
Gator Nitro is more rigid, so the less movement you have in your project, the longer Gator Nitro is going to last. The more permeable your project is, the longer Gator Nitro is going to last. So could the lifespan on Gator Nitro be 15 years? Could Definitely. Be. Could be. Yeah. Could it be as low as five years? Yeah, it's possible. Yep. Now, as far as uh, maintaining Gator Nitro, Chris, what do you recommend? Yeah, so it, I mean, as far as how long it takes for everything to get filled in and clogged up, you know, it really depends on the whole scenario. Is there, are there trees above? Is there a lot of trees? Is it near a forest? You know, pollen could be a problem, but I mean, that's that goes hand in hand. But as far as removing any kind of clogged areas, a simple pressure washing will do the trick, Mike. Yeah, so pressure washer, safe after 28 days. You can lightly run over it, remove most of the contaminants from the joint. But over time, little particles are going to stay in there. It will, you know, eventually probably decrease and get choked off to the point where you can't maintain it. It's clogged so deep down that you might not be able to flush it out. And unfortunately, yeah. there's no easy way to remove nitro and replace it. No, I mean, one, one good thing about nitro, it, it doesn't actually adhere to the stones. So if you did need to remove, let's just say an entire joint, you can chisel out on each end and probably get it up pretty easily. But you definitely don't want to chisel out an entire patio. Right. So, you know, nitro is not a very easy remove and replace. That's part of the reason why we really recommend our aqua rock, a number nine stone for those permeable, true permeable applications. Yes. Anything else, Topher? Are we good to go? Um, do have a question from a veteran nitro user. Evan, thank you very much. Um, what is the best way to clean off nitro once it's dried on my tools? Well, the best way to clean off nitro once it's dried on your tools is to not get it on your tools to begin with. We want to wet the surface down. Nitro is pre-mixed with the glue that binds it together. And as soon as it's exposed to the oxygen in the air, it starts to harden up. So what do we do to protect the pavers and the stone, Chris? You're spraying it all with water. We wet it yep. down. That yep. resin is hydrophobic. That means it doesn't like water. Yep. So if we wet our surface down, well, the stuff doesn't stick to it so much. Wet the tools down, Yep. right? Yep. Wet the walls down, uh, fire pits, the foundation of the house. Wet everything down that you can. Now, inevitably, your broom might get a little gummed up. It can get gunked up, for sure. Your tools might get a little bit uh, coated with nitro resin from using them on the job site all day. Yeah. The best way to clean them is actually to soak them in a tub or bucket of concentrated degreaser solution. Yeah. So TSP, Purple Power, uh, Grease Lightning, you know, the simple green, that kind of solution mixed up pretty strong ratio in a five gallon bucket or a tub. Soak those tools in it for a few days, and you'll be able to you know, kind of scrub or rinse that nitro out of it. All right. Any other questions, Topher? We've got um, lots of people are asking about, can I seal on top of nitro? How does nitro react with sealers, et cetera, et cetera? You can definitely seal over nitro. So you can seal over polymeric sand. You can yep. seal over nitro. You would want to wait. Let that nitro harden up. Yeah. Right. Don't try to seal while polymeric sand is still wet. Don't try to seal while nitro is still soft and mushy. Let them harden up. You now it's about 18 hours for nitro in the summertime. Yep. Then you can come back in and apply your sealers. Now, what do we talk about? Nitro is permeable, Chris. It's permeable. So you're now clogging up your whole joining material. So, hey, is that a problem? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. We talked about some areas where it's desirable to not have any permeability. So yep. just realize that. One, you, you don't want to let all your sealer flow down that nitro joint and disappear, but you also want to make sure that if you intended for it to be permeable, you're not clogging it up and blocking off all those pores. Anything else, Topher? Um, you're going to get to some of these. All right. Well, excellent, excellent questions. We appreciate yes. that. And really, if you haven't used nitro yet, or even if you have used nitro and you still have questions, reach out to your local Alliance rep. We're happy to answer any questions that you have, come out to the job site and install it with you, teach you any tips or tricks that we've learned along the way to make sure that you enjoy the experience. You know, we want you to yep. use Nitro where it's going to work, where the job is going to come out great and you're going to be happy using it. We don't want you to use Nitro on a job that's got tight joints no. and tell us, wow, no. that stuff's terrible. Yeah, and that goes with any of our products. You know, if you have any questions or you think it might work, we're happy to tell you that it won't work. We don't want you to have a bad experience. And if it won't work, We've got polymeric sand for you. We do. <laughs> All right. So excellent, you know, two excellent products. You can't go wrong unless you use them where they're not supposed to be used. Correct. Yeah. All right. So what else do we have, Chris? We've got more educational programming coming up. You can sign up for text alerts. 
Yeah. That'll let you know when we're going to have future training events. We're doing uh, quite a few live shows this winter from our Gator Studio on different topics. All right. I think that's it from Gator Studio. Have All a great right. day, everybody.